So two months before I turned 17, I got pregnant. And um, my parents wanted me to have an abortion. And my ex, Larry, and myself, we stood our ground. So we, um, with support actually from Open Door Pregnancy Center. But um, yeah, we stood our ground and never regretted a moment. Our daughter is one of our greatest gifts God has given us. Uh, we had a baby girl. Her name is Arielle. She's 33. She's a mom. She's a wife. Um, she's one of God's best gifts he's ever given us. In my early 20s, I found myself pregnant again. Uh, it was a new relationship. We'd only been together for a year. The guilt um, and shame of allowing myself to get pregnant again just uh, was overwhelming and I chose to have an abortion this time. Um, which led to many years of a lot of guilt, a lot of shame. I couldn't talk about it, no one knew. Uh, a few years after having the abortion, I got married to Joe. And uh, as we were starting to add on to our family, I got pregnant and I had a miscarriage. And that miscarriage just brought all the guilt and the shame to the surface again. And uh, yeah, I felt like it was punishment for having the abortion. I was a nutcase. And all, honestly, I was a nutcase. I had a total breakdown. I didn't speak of it for over 20 years. I couldn't get those words out of my mouth. And, um, and one Sunday morning, Cindy Paoselli shared her and Don's story. And that was the first time I was able to say to somebody, I had an abortion too. And part of the healing was just saying it, confessing it to people. And I had to confess. I felt like God was leading me to confess to those who I was afraid was gonna judge me the hardest or see me differently or not love me as much or respect me as much. And that was my children. They were wonderful and loving and kind. And um, it just, it took the power away from the shame, me confessing to them. I don't think I had to confess to have full uh, forgiveness, but I had to confess to silence the enemy. I still had a hard time saying the words, completely forgiving myself is, I can't complete, I can't forgive myself is what I would, con I would constantly say. Until somebody spoke over me a word from the Lord that um, my forgiveness is sufficient. You don't need to forgive yourself because my forgiveness is sufficient. And that was, that was the moments of like every chain of guilt and shame and regret fell off. And uh, then it was a new journey. It was a journey of, all right, God, what does your word say? This is um, something you've healed me for. How can I use this? I wanna see what you have to say. And what does your word have to say? So it was a journey through his word. And in his word, he showed me that there's life in a woman's womb. Two babies wrestling, two babies can't wrestle unless there's life. When Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist and Mary was pregnant with Jesus and Mary entered into Elizabeth's home, her, the spirit filled Elizabeth's baby and the baby jumped for joy. There needs to be life for a baby to jump for joy. He showed me that throughout his word, unborn children are never referred to anything other than child, baby, him, her, son, daughter. They're not referred to as cell clumps or unviable cells or, or anything. In the, um, it, he showed me in the New Testament that the word the Greek word in, used in the New Testament for unborn child and born child are the same. They are the same, whether they're born or unborn, they're the same. Um, 
in Jeremiah, you know, there's a scripture, God knew you before you were born. He had plans for you before you were born, plans that are good, plans to prosper you. And those are encouraging words. I've gone to those words many times to for encouragement for myself or shared with someone else, but I saw them differently because I saw that he knew every child before they were even conceived. And before they're even conceived, he has plans for them, plans that are good for them. And those plans are not only if you're conceived at an opportune time or conceived in love, they are for all who were conceived. I heard a pastor say that God could have sent Jesus any way he wanted. The almighty God has the ability, the power, the might to send his son, Jesus, the Messiah, the savior of the world, any way he wanted. And he chose to send him through conception and have him go through a pregnancy and go through a birth. That's how much he values the life of an unborn child.